Good morning guys. So if you like rural churches you're going to like this walk. It's possibly the most rural ramble that I've done this year so far. Uh, today it's about midday, very very chilly, frost everywhere. Uh, I've come to Thornton Le Dale, uh, which is just at the foothills of the North York Moors and I'm going to be walking from Ellerburn uh, with a lovely old church there up to a place called Lockton to another fine old church and if you like old churches you're going to like this church crawl. So let's go and head up, uh, skirt the edge of Dorby Forest I think and then hopefully the paths won't be too muddy and we'll see what's on the way. St Hilda's Church at Ellerburn. I've been here before but it was closed because that was coming to the end of a period uh, where there was a big problem with bats in this church and that, that had been going on since 2011 around that time but it's open now and in much better condition. Um, it's absolutely amazing. The church, there's been a site of worship here since the 9th century it's believed because of the um, pre-conquest stone fragments that are built into the wall. Um, but it's largely sort of medieval uh, and it was rebuilt in 1905 by the quite well-known arts and crafts architect W.D. Caro, um, who is probably the person responsible for incorporating some of those pre-conquest stone fragments into the exterior wall. But I am bowled over by the interior of this church. It's an honour to be here and so worth making the journey out today. So far I've come from Thornton Le Dale, followed the road up past the church, up this footpath, and there's Ellerburn. And then from Ellerburn, I'm going to be following this Kirkdale slack, up past the earthworks, which I believe is actually just over there. Then we're going to join this road here, which eventually turns into a footpath, which will take us to Lockton. And normally these paths would be so muddy, but today it's all frozen over, which is great news for me. My parents used to bring my sister and I to Dolby Forest quite a lot as kids, so it's really familiar, but I've not been back here in, oh yeah, pushing nearly six or seven years maybe once in that time. But it's just a maze of footpaths and cycle tracks. And it's great fun to come out here on bikes as well. But yeah, it doesn't matter how I get to Lockton, it's just gonna be nostalgic and it's just really amazing. Just walking through all these little paths. I've had to make a slight change of plan because I got to the visitor centre at Dolby Forest and you've got to push on a little bit down a road and then a couple of footpaths towards Lockton but it's just so icy, I nearly went on my ass. So I went into the visitor centre, got a little uh, map of trees, an easy ID guide because I could be better at IDing trees and yeah, the older I got the more I wish I knew about them. So. Uh, yeah, I got that. Uh, but I might go back to Ellerburn and Thornton Le Dale and then go to Pickering instead. So change of plan, but hopefully we can make something of the days still. So having left the visitor centre, it is really hard to tell if I'm on private or, pu or public uh, land at the moment. Uh, so on my phone, I've got the OS map but it's actually just a screenshot that I took at home, so I can't, and there's no signal here, you can, you can see at the top, it just says no surface, no bars. It was a crack on my screen, so maybe you can't, but yeah, so I'm stuffed because I can't actually get onto my data to see where I am. Uh, and 
I only screenshotted the footpath uh, that didn't go off this map. So yeah, that's a lesson learned. Uh, maybe bring a map next time. But turning a corner, thank goodness. That up on the path ahead, that looks like a turnstile to me. So I think this was a good time to turn around actually because it's two o'clock and already the mud is starting to thaw underfoot and I'm slipping around again. So good decision to turn around. I mean the sun sets today at about 20 past four so to have got to Lockton and back again it would have been definitely slippy although it would have been starting to get a bit colder by then but yeah it would have been dark. No, no good but um, yeah quite glad I turned around. Going through uh, a nice dale here into Ellaburn again where I can hopefully say goodbye to the church once more, have some lunch and then see what Pickering's got. That is really good to know actually if I do this walk again in the summer to follow the footpath that goes alongside the fish farm. Uh, so essentially what I've done today but in reverse uh, because that will bring you straight out into Dolby Forest near the visitor centre and then you can loop around to Lockton and actually go back to Ellaburn the way I came. So that is good to know. But here we are on the footpath back nearly at Ellaburn St Hilda's. Some people outside the church there. Quite a popular little stop off for people especially in the summer when they come to this part of the North York Moors, St Hilda's. Oh, it looks beautiful there, doesn't it? Really nice. Well, this is All Saints Church at Thornton Le Dale, where I've come to have my lunch before going on to Pickering. It's a medieval core to this church by the looks of it. The nave arcades, I suspect, are med late medieval. Well, they could be Victorian. I mean, some of the masonry does look like it's at least reused and repurposed medieval ashlar. But the chancel is entirely Victorian. And I want to show you one thing in the chancel, in the sanctuary actually. So we've got to go over the uh, rail there and it's under that arched canopy. So I'll have to check in the Pevsner's Guide when I get home. Although there isn't actually a Pevsner, not a revised one for North Yorkshire. That's currently being uh, redone at the moment. But I think I've got a copy of the old one. So I'll have to look and see who this is or if it's an anonymous effigy. But to me, it looks 14th century. It's a female, definitely of some uh, renown because if you can move these aside, you'll see that there are arms, heraldry on either side. Oh, it's too dark on that, on her left-hand side to see. There's a little dog at her feet. Again, it's a bit too dark. But yeah, this is a very impressive effigy. It's a bit worn, but it's got another little canopy down there. So I suspect this has been moved. Uh, definitely looks like it's had some modern cement uh, when it's been reset there. But that's quite an impressive feature. I'm interested by that canopy actually, and how that doesn't fit within this um, recess. Well, I mean, of course, this has been refitted when the chancel was built in the 19th century. The rest of the church is just quite pleasant, un unostentatious, I would say. Um, but yeah, very, very nice.
Well, St. Peter and St. Paul's Church in Pickering is open every day from nine till four, it says on the door, and you've definitely got to come and see it. It's a great way to end my war today because uh, I haven't been to see the 15th century war paintings in the nave in a quite a long time. Uh, if you're interested to know a bit more about those war paintings, there's recently been a book published by Dr. Kate Giles on the history of them and their discovery in the 19th century and how they were then again covered up and restored um, and what bits are original to the late medieval period. Um, I'm also going to link in the video description to a, a lecture which Dr. Kate Giles kindly gave for the Society for Church Archaeology uh, last year about that book. So if you're interested to find out a bit more, you could get the book and maybe watch the lecture as well. But for now, I hope you enjoy these shots and cheers guys. Uh, see you for another walk soon.